Hi everyone and welcome to this month's voted on Patreon video which is a rope bridge. So we're going to go through the process of creating a rope bridge where the player can, or the designer can generate a rope bridge and design however long they want it to be and have physics take over and control its bounciness as you walk along it um, in a nice easy to use manner. So let's take a look at how this is achieved. So to get started with our rope bridge we need to first of all create the plank that we'll be using for each of the planks. So I'm going to go into modeling mode and just quickly make a box and place that in. And I've set the width here to 50, 220 in the height and it gets this little plank shape. So width is 50, like so. 200 is the length of it and depth of it rather. And the height is 20. Okay, and that's all you really need is just this. Once you've done that, hit accept and go back to my selection mode. And this will make a static mesh. And the static meshes are found inside of your map folder. So go to maps. And you'll see a generated folder next to your map. And in there you'll find the plank. That's it. Go into this. And you want to set up this collision. Now being a box, the collision is super simple. All you have to do is go to collision, add box. And add a box. We're then going to go to the right hand side and change its physics settings to change its collision complexity from use complex collision as simple and change it to project default. That means uh, it, the pro physics uh, simulation can actually happen on it because physics will only work if it is set to use simple collisions rather than complex ones. Okay, so that'll do with that. I'm just going to rename it because we don't want it called box E81 E E so on. So I'm going to rename that one to uh, static mesh plank. Like so. Okay, there's my plank. Uh, we can delete this one now. And it'll still be in our folder, so that's all good. Okay, so we're going to create our rope bridge actor. And we're going to call it rope bridge. BP rope bridge. And open it up. And the way this is going to work, it's going to build it on the construction script. So you can drag it into the editor, use it and build it in the editor. Um, this makes designing levels a lot easier and also testing things. Um, the main thing we need to have though on our variables is the length. So how many planks of wood are gonna be making up our rope bridge. So we could do uh, length as an integer. There we go. And head over now to the construction script. So the construction script consists of a few elements. The first element is to, to put lay out all the planks in a line next to each other. So we're going to create a function and we call it one generate planks. And this is going to take our length and we're going to put it into a for loop. And put it as a last index. A for loop will go through each of the indices uh, one at a time. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to the length, whatever it's set to. And every single time it's going to add something else to this. And what we're going to do in here is going to do an add static mesh component. And on the right hand side, we've selected, you can choose what mesh you want to use. We obviously want to use our plank asset we just made. We then want to turn on simulate physics. And everything else we can think we can leave alone. Yep, that's all good. Now we do have to give it a location of where we want it to go. So we'll split your transform. Oh, not that. Let's split it. And I want to take the index here and multiply it by the length of the plank plus a gap. You want a gap in between your wood so they've got room to move. Um, so my planks are 50. I'm going to have a 10 unit gap in between each one. So I'm going to set this value to 60. So you just combine it with the gap size and the plank size and you'll get the size you need here. And then I'm going to split this again and I'll put that in the Y coordinate. And hit compile. Now, before I carry on, let's just test that this works. If I go back to my constructor script and add the generate planks to the list. And go to my viewport. There's one already. Go to my length. I can change the length here to say 10. And you can see it's now generating all 10 planks for us in our line. Perfect. And just double check you've got that gap in between them so they have room to move. 
Now, also in generate planks, we need to keep track of each of our planks because we need to reference them later on. So what we do is have another variable, and that'll be called planks, and it'll be a static mesh component. You then want to make it an array because it's going to be a list of all the planks that you added to your bridge. So let's drag out our planks array and add to it this mesh that's good, created. So you're making a load of components and they're adding the components to this list. Compile, save, and that should all look the same still. Perfect. Okay, so that's generate planks done on the construction script. Next, we have to generate is the physics constraints. These are basically the bolts that go in between of the planks to keep them attached to each other. Because at the moment, they'll just fall apart. Um, to demonstrate, just drag that out here. Like that. And push play. They just fall apart, which is not what we want. So what we want to do is attach them all together. So what we're going to do is create another function called generate. constraints and this one is going to do another for loop and for the for loop we're going to use our length again and put but this time you're going to do take away one now the reason why we take away one is because the generate planks loop does the length, which is 10, for example, but that includes zero, so it becomes 11 planks. And if you go to the viewport, you'll see there's 11 planks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, but there's 10 gaps. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So the constraints will be the length minus 1 to get 10 on our for loop. Okay, on each, on the, uh, sorry, on the loop body, we're going to do add physics constraint component and on this we want to place these at the correct location in between the gaps so if we're going to split our transform and the transform is going to be the location of each of our planks plus a certain amount so i'm going to go to planks array and do get and get the first index and i want to get the relative location and split that I'm going to split the location here too and the Y I'm going to add on half of the plank size plus half of the gap so the plank size is 50 so half of that is 25 add the gap but half of it is the gap size is 10 therefore 5 so therefore on the location Y I want to add 30 to it And put that into there. Now compile that and add it to your event graph, uh, uh, to your construction script. Sorry, and we should now see on the viewport the planks and the constraints are now spawned in between them. So there's one there, there, and you can see they're all spawning as such. Okay. Back on the generate constraints, we need to then set up the constraint to constrain itself to the planks. So from the return value of the constraint component, you can do set con component or constrained components um, basically anything that you see on here on the details panel when I select it these are all variables you can change so I want to change the constraint components which are these things over here so just search for the name of it and it'll come up so in here we're seeing component one and component two so component one is going to be the planks and we're going to get a copy of the cut index so I'm going to drag that down there and put that in component one. Then I'm going to do another get. But this time I want to get the next plank. So I'm going to do index plus one. And put that into component two. Compile that and save that. Now go back to your viewport. And we should see if I just maybe have to tweak this a little bit. Uh, should work should see yeah there you go 
should see little uh, indicators indicating that they've been selected. So uh, red boxes and blue boxes. Okay. These has got red and blue on them, so they've been attached to there. Okay. So that's the constraints. Now the constraints themselves need various settings made on them. So click on the add physics constraint component. We're going to select that. And we're going to change how it constrains the two assets together. So first of all, I'm going to go down to uh, the linear limits and I want to control the Z motion. So I want it to go up and down a little bit. So I'm going to go to limited for Z motion and I put in, let's say, uh, three, maybe a bit more, but we'll try three. And then on angular limits right now, we're going to turn them all be locked. Okay, so it doesn't rotate at all. Compile and save this. Okay, so on the basics, we've got a rope bridge that looks like this. Okay, so it's a little bit springy and it's not bad. Okay, but we can do a lot better. So let's lock the first and last planks down so we can have it going across gaps. Um, so let's go to here and we're going to go back to our construction script and we're going to take our planks array. We're going to get the first one, which is get copy of zero. And we're also going to get the last index and do another get. So now I've got the first one and the last one. And for both of them, I want to do set simulate physics to false. Okay, so that will lock those first two down and we'll see that this thing doesn't fall to the floor. Okay, so if I go up here, I can now run along this bridge and it's got a little bit of movement in it and you can control how you want it to move by changing the linear limits on your rope bridge. So one thing we also want to do is rotate the blocks too because at the moment they're just going up and down and only. So to make that a bit clearer so you can see that, if I go to constraint and change the limit from 3 to 10, you'll see it goes down a bit more. You can see what's happening. The planks don't rotate at all. They're literally just moving up and down, Okay, which looks a bit weird. We don't want it to do that. We want it to actually turn a little bit. So to make them turn, we're going to go back to our physics constraint component. And we're going to go down to the swing one, swing two, and twist motions. Now you want them all locked apart from twist motion. Twist motion, we're going to go limited. And by default, it's set to 45. Now, let's take a look at what that looks like. If I go to my viewport, I uh, might have to go into the world viewport so you can see this. Yep, there you go. Um, you can see the angle of movement they have, right? I don't want it to rotate at that point. I want it to rotate down. Like, so they've got um, uh, that kind of rotation like going downwards, okay? Because at the moment, that means it's going to angle up and down. It's hard to just demonstrate. But they're going to like, angle at that sort of range. I want it to angle downwards. So what we're going to do is rotate the physics constraint, a constraint round so that that's pointing down. So go to your constraint generation and go down to relative rotation and not too sure which one it is we'll try the y and put in 90 let's see what that's doing uh nope wrong way you see it's gone flat so that means i want to do the x so change x to 90 and y to zero okay and that's what we want we want it sort of cone facing down like this okay Next, we can also add further little tweaks to our constraint by going down to our linear motor and turning on the Z linear motor. So leave it as Z, zero. And strength, we're going to put in as uh, 10. We'll tweak that as we need to. But what that's going to do is basically add a bit of spring to your step. So they go down. You can see it's already working a lot better. Um, But now it's got like a bit of a spring to it, not rather than being straight pulled down. Okay. 
Now, at the moment, they're going quite far down, and that's because of the um, value I changed earlier that I didn't put back. So the limit on the Z motion is currently 10. I'm going to change it back down to 3. So now it needs a little bit of motion. That's looking better. And we can now jump on. We've got a much nicer looking road bridge. Excellent. So as I said, like this is now going to generate and be a lot easier doing uh, the level because we can now change its length in the level freely. So if all I do is go to the length variable and make it editable and hit compile, and because it's editable, it means I can change it in the level. So currently it's set to nine. If I change that to uh, 15, you can see it get longer. Let's do like 30. And it also works with rotation. So if I were to rotate it like this, for example, you can see it working. And it gives it a nice, really cool effect. And you can make interesting rope bridges. Yeah, too too steep, <laughs> but you can make them. Um, but there you go. And all that's left really is to replace the planks with an asset that you want to use. Um, if you want to add ropes to the sides, you can use the cable manager, uh, cable components if you want. But the hard part is this bit, and hopefully this will help you out and you can start adding ropes to it. So give yourself a challenge. See if you can work out how to put a rope cable on either side to generate up to the other side. Okay. So there you have it, a nice simple rope bridge. Just replace the assets for what you need. Um, now a little extra challenge for you if you want to try and do it on your own, you can do, uh, but trying to add cables to either side. So you've got like basically handrails going across it. Feel free to try that if you want to give it a try. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing what you share about that over on our Discord channel. So thank you again to all the patrons who voted for this video. Um, and thank you again for their support. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Thank you.